We're in Cornwall on this beautiful hot sunny day and we've come to the Eden project which is this incredible project. An old, it's an old quarry that's been turned into this absolute haven. Normally it's very peaceful and quiet and bucolic but they're actually doing a bit of drilling on the cliffs over there. But the drilling we've come to see is a little bit more extensive than that because what we've come to see here is how do you generate all the power that a, a big installation like this uses and it's just is it power from the grid do they have wind turbines all around here have they got solar panels well they've got all that but they've gone one step further and that's what we've come to see here today because the way they're going to generate all the power that they need here and for the villages around here is this this is a massive geothermal drilling rig. This is drilling deep, deep, deep down into the Earth's crust, four kilometers deep down. And there will be fluid flowing around that and it will come out and it's really hot. It's not like warm, it's not a bit warm, it's really hot. And that will, that will then in turn drive the heat, the biodomes, the beautiful domes in the, in the, in the Eden Project. And it, will, it could eventually produce electricity, which will generate way more than the Eden Project can use. So it will go into the grid and light homes and heat people's houses all around here. It's an amazing project. That is a massive, massive rig. This is the Eden Project, and this is fully charged. Don't forget our great EV giveaway. Subscribe and enter for the chance to win one of several electrifying prizes, including one of four electric cars. So Max, thank you so much for letting us look at this for a start. It is amazing to see. I've never seen drilling really taking place, you know, live there with the big geezers with all the big machinery. It's incredible. But let's just go through. So what is fascinating is it is the same kit that you use to drill for oil or gas, which is extraordinary. Absolutely. It's yeah. completely the same equipment. And so that, hope, that gives us a bit of hope. Well, for in a sense, oil and gas? Yeah, because, but also because that technology is, has an enormous future life for yeah. what you're doing. It isn't going to, you know, when we stop drilling for oil and gas, we're not going to stop drilling. That's exactly yeah. it. So in terms of the transferable skills as well, there's many, many people who have skills from oil and gas who, that we can use those skills in the geothermal industry to yeah. drill those wells. Yeah, we started drilling uh, 10 days ago. Right. Um, and I think we're down to about 1,000 meters down. Right. We're aiming to end at about 4.7 kilometers. And then all of this will be um, carbon negative. Yeah. It will power everything we've got here. Right. And if we get the right amount of heat coming out, we will also get our turbines to work. And that will do about 17,000 houses around us. You and I have been saying for 10, 15 years, what we need is baseload. It's the absence of baseload that has stopped people being serious about renewables because yeah. they say when the sun don't shine, when the when wind, wind doesn't blow, blow, all those things. What are yeah. you going to do? Make uh, uh, battery technology isn't good enough. And what we're saying is, this is it. Right. You can turn it on and off when you like to compensate for when the wind isn't blowing yeah. and the sun isn't shining. So what you're drilling here, you know, if you if there was oil under here, an oil company probably wouldn't try and drill it here because because it's granite. So you're drilling in the hardest we possible are. rock. So that and that is proving to be. Is it slower than you'd hoped or are you about where you were hoping to get to by now? We're about where we were hoping to get to. We've, we've hit, hit granite higher up than we thought. We've, we got right. into granite at sort of 40 metres um, and it's been pretty so slow going ever since. Right. We knew it was going to be slow going. So right. we are making up that time a bit. Right. So we'll see what happens. Um, but we have allowed enough time. We do know approximately how long it's going to take us. Right. Because all those pipes that we can, can I, I'm trying to see if I can see them from here, that are, going, that are hanging up there ready to go in, you, when you realise how long, how long a pipe is that does 30 metres, and you think, well, that's nothing. 30 metres is nothing. You yeah. know, it's such a deep, well, it's so deep, isn't it? It's, Absolutely. Well, 800 metres is already quite a long way. Yeah. If you think, well, I'm just going to go out and run 800 metres yes. now. Yeah. Then you're going to be, you know, puffing and puffing after yeah. that, aren't you? But you're, so you're aiming for four, around four kilometres, is that right? Is that the, the hope? Around, it's probably going to be more, four and a half, right. maybe 4,600. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, 
have you already reached higher temperatures than are on the surface of the depth you've gone to? Yes, we have. Right. Um, so as we're going deeper, obviously the temperature is increasing. Yeah. But your geothermal gradient in granite is higher than it would be in a conventional sandstone right. or a limestone or anything else. Yeah. So you're getting you 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 have uh, is that why this That's site why is Cornwall a good is idea. so good for it right. because there's a lot of granite in Cornwall. Yeah. And because of that higher geothermal gradient. Right. That's what we're here for. Right. Because we need because we can drill to a comparatively shallower depth and get a higher, get a higher geothermal heat. gradient. Because wow. why I have got no concept of you know we've seen some uh, uh, building sites of yes. new building developments in, in South Wales yep. where they've done geothermal heating and one borehole yep. heats three homes and they've done them. Absolutely. I would think those are maybe maybe so 150 200 meters deep, deep. I have yeah. no idea. So that's district heating or ground yes. source heat pumps. Yeah. But here we're looking our primary objective here is electricity generation right. from geothermal power right so we need to go that much deeper to get that much higher a temperature once we get to the bottom wow. and then we can use that to generate I presume your because it is the, it's on the most simple terms is the idea that there's a, a, a liquid that goes down and a pipe turns around and comes back up and when it comes up it's hot yeah was that, the plan here is to drill two wells so this is right. the first of two wells right and we'll be basically pumping up one well and down the other well. Yeah. Right. So there'll be an injector and a producer, and from the producer, what we produce will be used to, to, to basically turn the turbine. What we're wanting to do is we're, we're aiming for a geological structure called the Great Cross Course. Right. And the, the Great Cross Course is, is kind of sitting at an angle like this. And, and we're drilling down here. Right. We're drilling down, drilling down. What we want to do is go through this Great Cross Course. So we're going to drill down to a certain depth, maybe 1,500 metres, and then we're going to what we call kick off. Right. And we're going to come like this through the Great Cross Course. So we're going to go drill directionally, yeah. using all that oil and gas technology through the Great Cross Course, through this fault line and yeah. that's what we're hoping to find in that fault line is some permeability right so we're in the, in the fault line we'll get flow we know that in this in the granite beneath us in the in this cornubian batholith as it's known we are going to find heat right so there's a there's a gradient there a heat gradient we're hoping that at sort of four and a half five thousand where we know that it will be about 180 degrees centigrade wow that is incredible isn't it wow. so if we can get flow as well as heat, then we'll get some serious energy right. out of this well. Yeah. So two, two stages basically. This first well, we need to prove that it's hot down there. Right. We want to find that permeability. So what we'll do with this well is that we'll put a heat exchanger in the ground, right. we'll put a heat main in down to the Eden project and we'll heat those biomes right. through plate heat exchangers with the heat from the heat exchanger down the well. So right. that's a coaxial heat exchanger, basically. We'll, we'll put cold actually, water down. That, and that actually goes down in the well. That will go right, right. down in the well. Yeah. Wow. And um, that will probably go down to about 4,000 meters, we're thinking at the right. moment. But it, it depends on what we find as we're drilling. Yeah. So what we'll do with that, we'll, we'll push water down. We'll bring hot water back up. We'll send that hot water down to the Eden project. Yep and we'll heat the biomes with that. The, the biomes are, are pretty hungry on energy right. and they're currently heated by gas. And then essentially that's, Eden is then just about carbon zero, yeah. hopefully. Then the second stage, depending on how this first well goes, we'll, we'll drill a second well. The second well won't be quite as deep. Right. Maybe it's, it's 4,200 or... Right. What we want to do is we, will, we want to establish some flow in that great cross course. Yeah. We want to establish flow where we pump down the deep well into the great cross course, right. into that permeable zone, and then we pump out of the shallow well. And we get cold, cold water in, hot water, hot water out. out. Down the and deep that's well. On a, that's on a, like a loop. That's on be a the loop. same fluid that's going it. through. Right. Down the deep well, through the great cross course, in, in the permeability, in the fault zone, right. back up the shallow well. With that then, we'd hope to produce energy, produce electricity right. um, via a binary power plant, which is a, a, essentially a turbine. Right. And, I mean, at the initial, we're, we're probably talking four or five megawatts, something like right. that. Right, wow. So quite yeah. a chunky thing. And that can run 
essentially all the things that people aren't used to with renewable energy sources 24 7 365 yeah. it just runs all the time yes yeah, it runs all the time yeah, yeah. so when the sun's not shining, it's still running. When yeah. the wind's not blowing, <laughs> yeah. it's still running. Right. And and at this stage, it, I'll, I'll emphasise it, it's you know this is a research project. Yeah. And and we wouldn't be able to do this without the RDF funding. Right. Um, and it, it's early days for geothermal in this country. Yeah. And we don't know a huge amount about the geology beneath us. Right. So right. This, at that depth, yes. Yeah. So at, yeah. at that depth. So we drilled a 26 inch section to, so you see the bit outside in a minute, right. it's absolutely, like 26 and under, but it's a big piece of kit. Yeah. That we drilled to 241 metres. Right. And then we started on the 17 and a half inch section, and we're currently halfway through that, but we've had to change the bit because it's so abrasive, the granite's right. very, very hard. Um, so you've already got a smaller hole that goes We've already got a 17 metres. and a half inch bit to, right. to, 800, uh, to 800 metres, and now we're going to go down and carry on drilling this section right. to hopefully 1500 metres. It just depends on how drilling conditions continue right. basically. So is it yeah. possible then that you could reach a point where you go, look, we're just not going to get any further? I mean, is that one of the dangers? We're, it is one of the dangers. Right. If we keep going through equipment very, very quickly, yeah. then we might decide you know, what, what we'll to But there's lots of things you have to, you know, you have to clarify before you actually change your well plan. Right. Um, but plan is we're going to try and stick to it. We're going to get to 1500 meters in the 17 and a half inch section. Right. And then after that, we'll go on with the 12 and a quarter inch. And then the last oh, so one, it, it, it it's gets wide, smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah, yeah, as you go and down. so what's the sort of, if you, if it, everything works perfectly, yeah. what's the depth you're going to get to? It will be anything spot? from 4,500 metres to maybe 5,250 metres. Wow. As the demand for fossil fuels necessarily goes down, the equipment to drill is going to become more and more cheap, to which use. means oh, that the depths right. we can reach at a price similar to today means that there isn't a square inch of Britain. I want to repeat that. That's so good. There isn't a square inch of Britain that is not capable of being mined for geothermal power. Right. That is a complete revolution. It means that we could be at the same excitement as when Brunel was strutting his stuff. Yeah. And we yeah. just need to grab it by the throat. And luckily enough, I think Prime Minister Johnson really got it this, this this last few days when he was here so that just to explain to people who don't so if you could if you've got steam and you've got pressure and you've got plenty of it you can run a turbine that spins a generator that spin, that generates electricity i mean that's what you're doing which is the same as it would be in a coal burning power plant or a gas plant that's exactly. all you're doing you're boiling water to get steam to drive the turbine but we're not burning but you're not coal, burning everything and we're not burning gas yeah and we're not i know it's not nuclear either no no so i mean the studies that have been done are saying well potentially if we could tap into what's what's beneath us properly that we could get up to maybe 20 percent of, of of the uk's right. power could be supplied of electricity could yeah. be supplied by geothermal yeah um you know and and that's the reason for this which project. is currently slightly more than we get from nuclear so it's not minor it's a big chunk of it's, the power it's that a we big use. chunk yeah there's a long way to go yet yeah and would there be other sites in the UK where the drilling was a bit easier, where it might be warmer at a less big depth, or is the, that not this, the case? These, these are the best locations. Right. We, we know within, within this granite that the heat is, is the closest to the surface as we're going to get, basically. Right. But there okay. are other places. Um, there's up, up in Scotland, there's some up in the, in the northeast in Northumberland. Right. This, is, this is by far this the warmest is, here. This apparently. is the warmest here. So that is, and is that to do with the density of the rock, that the, the rock's been warmed for, by the centre of the core of the earth for billions of years and it's, it holds the heat more, or what, is it not that simple? Essentially, it's decaying nuclear, ra uh, ra decaying radioactivity. In the centre of the earth? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so that's why it's still warm down there. Right. I know little about economics, but once you've got this incredibly huge rig that's been transported here from yes, the Czech Republic, from Czech Republic, once you've got it here, you don't want it sitting around doing nothing. Absolutely. So is this happening round the clock? It's, yeah, it happens 24 hours a day. Oh, really? It's, so there's people yeah, here at 3 yeah. in the morning? Uh, uh, you have a day shift and a night shift, wow. and they do 12-hour shifts. 
Um, wow. Yeah, it's round the clock operations. Wow. If you pay a day rate for the rig, you want to try and optimize you, you the time you have the rig here. Yeah. Yeah. So, and if you have yeah. problems, it starts to get very expensive. Right. So it's in our interest to, everything has to be done as safe as possible, yeah. but it's in our interest to work as efficiently but safely as possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's an extraordinary it's operation. So all the time, we've been up here quite a while now. Yeah, I don't know how much pipe they've made up since we've been here, but no, yeah, we can probably lot, count if we look what's left outside. Yeah, there's a yeah. huge pile of it. <laughs> yeah. Now the fluids that you're pumping down. This is all that I think. I'm just asking, thinking of all the. The, the horror question. So it's not it, it's not the same as fracking. It's the same machinery to drill that, yep. that you might use in fracking, but the process isn't the same. You're not pumping fluids at super high temperatures, at super high pressures. No, to smash not. the rock up or anything like that. No, no, we don't. We don't need to do that. Yeah. We we wouldn't want to do that anyway. Um, right. I mean, we have we have a a, re a number of seismic monitors, right? Seismometers all around the site, um, and we would put those in anyway. Yeah because where, wherever you drill, there's potentially always a, a risk of seismic right. activity. So however small that risk is, we need to mitigate that risk and we, we need to be able to know what our risks are yeah. essentially. So, um, but no, very, in, in coming, coming back to your original question, we will not be injecting into the ground right. at big pressures. Yeah. I mean, it's basically you've got to have enough pressure to push it, the water back up, and that's about it, really. Yeah, the essentially, fluid yes. back up. So if you're, I mean, if you're generating what five or six megawatts, yeah, that's five megawatts, yeah, five megawatts. I mean, that, I'm assuming that's more than the Eden project itself uses as yes. a as a as a uh, and, installation. And, and what what we would want is for that to go onto the grid, basically. Yeah. It just seems to be a very obvious resource that we should be using, basically, because it's there anyway. It's, yeah, it is. You know, and, and it's not going to run out. It's not going to stop. We're not burning anything to do it. God, it is, it is so exciting. I mean, it's, I can tell now it's a pretty long term project with a, a few stages. It's not like oh, yeah. ne next time we come back in four months time, you've got there's a big power station here. That's no, not quite, we're not quite there. We're a little <laughs> way off that. Britain has always been, I hate to say this, we've always distrusted people who talk too much. Yeah. We always have as a yeah. nation. And I think we've always actually given a lot more reverence to your, your Brunels and yeah. you know uh, Darwins and so on. And I think really the truth is that once this works, if this works as I know it will, it'll be the start of a huge revolution. Yeah. And those who are here over the next few weeks will know they were there right at the beginning. It's like being at the beginning of the Renaissance for God's sake. Yeah. So I think it's not often at the end of an episode of Fully Charged I can say, what have we learnt today? But I really think we can about this. This is the most extraordinary thing we've seen today. The real beginnings of an incredible new industry that is using the technology that's been developed over the last hundred years to, uh, to exploit the oil and gas that we've been burning <laughs> with gay abandon. And I think this is really exciting. It's the first thing we've seen of this scale. I mean, the scale of it, the big, muscular, heavy industrial scale of it is really impressive. And what they're doing here is, I think, incredibly brave and incredibly important. And I'm so glad that they're doing it. It is wonderful. I think we're going to see this more and more. I think we're going to see more and more geothermal energy emerging around the world. It's already, you know, well, well developed industry and it's going to be it's going to be bigger and bigger. And now they've stopped drilling there, which is such a relief, which means that we can wind the whole thing up. That's enough drilling for one day. Uh, normal caveat supply, Patreon, do have a look at the link if you're feeling generous. If not, just subscribe. That's wonderful for us, really helps us, doesn't cost you anything. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.